Yeah, it's all connected. When you hear about these elites, it's all connected. My dad was the co-founder and the vice president of technology of CyberSlice, the first online pizza ordering. And it was connected to the Clintons, to Epstein, to Diddy, Usher, um, Steve Jobs, because Steve Jobs placed the first online pizza order. Steve Jobs invested a lot in CyberSlice. You can watch a 10 minute long video about it. And interesting enough, my dad is scrubbing the internet of photos of him with the CyberSlice um, software as we speak. Scrubbing the internet of articles that mention his name. That's not suspicious at all, right? You can even see his name on the side and oh, right there. And Tim Glass, Steve Green, Jim Brimhall were all involved as well. I was actually trafficked to Steve Jobs. So when you call me crazy, this is who you're talking to. I want you to remember that. I was only four to seven years old when I was trafficked and exploited because my father would use this to lure clients in. This is who I'm fighting for every day. I've been fighting from custody of my, custody of my brother for the last three and a half years. Authorities and CPS refused to remove him from the home. And that is why I started exposing all of this was to save my brother, Kyle, because I have evidence now. You can watch my other videos. Um, this is not the video. I'm just trying to raise awareness on this. And you know what? I also used to suck my thumb up until I was 12 years old to prevent my dad and his business associates from sticking their you know what in my mouth. And... I would bite my thumb so hard too that it would actually make my thumb bleed and they would laugh and make fun of me for that and then I couldn't suck my thumb because it would burn to suck my thumb because I had an open cut on my thumb and um, if like I can even show you too I can show you that my thumbs look different from the amount of times that I bit my thumb and you can see there's a difference in the shape of them. And people say, oh, well, why didn't you come forward as a kid? I was highly traumatized and groomed not to tell anybody. He would threaten to sell me to elites and said that I was lucky that he was only assaulting me. He would say that Hillary would cut me and turn my into a witch's nose and that I was lucky. So I actually grew up thinking that I was lucky. And then by age seven, I just started to... um try to forget all of it because it was so traumatic and I had nobody to turn to for help because my dad would threaten to unalive my siblings and make me watch unalive my mom. I mean, he was constantly threatening me. One time he even handed me a magazine and he would actually do this regularly too, um, where he said, you're going to choose who lives and who is unalived. And I said, I'm not doing that. And he said, um, if I didn't, like he would use threats too. Like if I didn't, well, then I'm going to sell your sisters. And so I had to choose out of the magazine which kids lived and which ones didn't. And then he would say that it was my fault. And if I told anybody, I was going to go to prison as a seven-year-old from the age of four to seven. And it might have even occurred earlier than that, but that is the earliest age that I can remember. And then he started again when I was 14 and didn't stop until I left his home at 21 years old. So stop calling survivors crazy. And another thing is stop making this a political war. It is not a political war. Are there Democrat elites involved? Yes, but that is not a statement on all Democrats. Like you're not helping this cause by making this Democrat versus conservative. My dad is conservative, okay? We need to unite more than ever and look past our differences, our political differences, and look at the issue at hand, which is children in danger, children like my brother, children who are still missing, 850,000 kids going missing in the United States every year, 300,000 missing children at the border. That's what we should really be talking about. I wouldn't make this up. This is a very taboo subject. This is putting my own life in danger, but I said, I'm going to save this kid and I don't care what it takes. I don't care if I get unalived in the process. I love my brother so much. I would walk through fire for him. And I really tried to do everything correctly and go through all the appropriate channels first before I came forward to the public and make sure that I had a solid case before I came forward to the public because 
I know how risky and how dangerous this is. And I was really hoping that authorities would take me seriously and would work with me, but they haven't. And three and a half years ago, you know, they said, oh, well, it's just a he said, she said case. There's nothing we can do. But they wouldn't even go and um, interrogate my dad. And they wouldn't even go and look in his garage. There's, He's got a whole museum in his garage and he's trafficking still with his business now which is cups beer root a lot of you have mentioned how you can go onto his page and if you make an account um it says you have to contact the owner of the page to get access to private pages um that's not normal. I work in sales. I know that when I'm signing up to be an approved approved vendor to work with somebody, they ask for legitimate things like my business license, the name of my company. They don't they're not even asking for that. My parents are asking for your email address, your a password cuz you make an account and then you're locked out. You can't do anything unless you call my dad and get access to these private pages. That is suspicious as hell. You cannot tell me that that's not suspicious. And I will not be quiet because I'm fighting for my brother's life. And if you're standing in the way, you're getting blocked. That's that's what where I'm at right now. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're my best friend. I don't care if you're... I don't care who you are. I love my brother unconditionally. I raised that little boy... And I will be the person for him that I needed growing up. That's a vow I took when he was born. Because I knew that nobody else in my family was going to take care of him. Nobody. Nobody took care of me. You know what? If these elites keep getting away with it, one day it might actually be you fighting for your children. Because this number, 850,000 kids going missing every year is just going to keep on increasing. It's not going to get any better. Your world is on fire, so act like it.